The Photographer's Story series and the Tree Still Grow initiative have primarily been about gaining some inspiration and insight from some great photographers, but also encouraging you to reconnect with what's really important in your own work, perhaps leading to a light bulb moment or simply reminiscing over a fantastic experience in nature. But another goal of mine was to share some work from, from some true masters of landscape photography, people that have been around perhaps before YouTube and have been crafting images for decades, but for whatever reason have slipped under your radar. However, I know that many of you will have been admiring the work from Hans Strand for years before I was around, and rightly so. Now, Hans has never videoed himself before, so I really appreciate him stepping out of his comfort zone for us. This is a first in his 30 year career as a landscape photographer, and he's going to introduce us to some of his fantastic work from Iceland, but following this video, I really encourage you to go to his Instagram profile and just spend some time with his images. Hi everybody, I'm uh, Hans Strand and uh, today I will talk about my love affair with Iceland which uh, started 25 years ago. Uh, from the beginning I educated myself to become an engineer and uh, I graduated uh, from the Royal Institute of Technology here in Stockholm in 1981. And uh, at the time of the graduation, we managed to raise some money from the Swedish industry, uh, my class. And um, we got some money uh, and we went to uh, California to do some, uh, take some courses at Stanford University. And at the same time, I bought my first camera in San Francisco and took my first uh, rolls of film in, in Yosemite. So I was more or less... Uh, kind of baptized in, in the Southwest National Parks of the United States. So therefore, I, I was very much influenced by American uh, landscape photographers like Ansel Adams, David Munch, etc. And uh, I started my, uh, to photograph in their footprints, so to speak, and I uh, went several times to uh, the Southwest and I came home with pictures that uh, I wasn't too happy with those because it was more or less uh, the same stuff as everybody else had been shooting for 50 years. So for that reason I went to Iceland for the first time in 1995. And at that time uh, very few photographers went to Iceland. So I wanted to go to a place where there was no references. So uh, I drove around uh, in a four wheel drive for about a month and I got to see the island. And at the same time, I came across this book, uh, Iceland, by Klaus Franke. And it contained uh, a lot of aerial photographs. And they really blew me off and uh, opened the door for me into uh, the world of aerial photography. And uh, then I started to go to Iceland myself after that and started to uh, shoot from the air. I rented airplanes with pilots. And um, later on, I, I started to run workshops uh, flying helicopter with my clients. So that's how it started. And um, from the air, Iceland is just mind-blowing. It's just incredible to see from above. I was especially uh, amazed by the river deltas. How, how Mother Earth could express itself in such a complex, complex way as as it does uh, in a river delta. I, I could never have imagined these kind of formations that you can see from above. How water is uh, winding back and forth in these braided river deltas. And the colors coming from the volcanic soil, just uh, I, I didn't believe that they really existed. I thought that Frank's book was made up uh, um, there was some kind of mumbo-jumbo be behind his photographs, but I realized myself as soon as I came up in the airplane and I saw the colors, that they really existed, all these red colors coming from iron oxide and um, weird colors uh, from volcanic uh, minerals. So um, in 2000, I, I did my first uh, try. I rented an airplane and uh, I flew over the rivers of the south coast and I flew over the highlands and, and um, gradually started to understand how it works to photograph from the air. It's, it's like 
it's like standing at the end of a conveyor belt where where uh, the motives are coming towards you in, in a really fast speed you know you have to be really quick especially when you fly a, a fixed wing airplane like a Cessna it goes really quick you have first of all you have to position your airplane the right way in order to get the right composition and that really takes time in the beginning I found it almost impossible but later on I developed some a good technique to get what I wanted it's so much easier shooting from a helicopter where it's like it's like a moving tripod from A to B to C etc you you can really put yourself wherever you want in the sky and it of course costs a lot more it's about I would say eight times more expensive than flying an airplane and that's the big problem um, anyway I um, will talk about a few of my photos uh, that I'm really happy with few of my river shots and this is uh, one of my favorite uh, it was shot in 2009 over a delta called Skeidara Sander on the south coast um, the day before I had been throwing up in an airplane so I was I had no self-confidence I, I tend to get really airsick quite often but later on I found a pill that worked and also a patch I can put behind my ear that uh, keeps me away from getting sick which is an advantage really because when you get as soon as you get sick you lose all your inspiration you just try to survive and actually you don't care if you survive either it's because you get so sick but anyway I this shot of, of this river uh, was made from a Cessna we we're flying about uh, 400 meters over the river and Skeidara Sander is a huge delta it, it measures uh, about 42 kilometers from across and it has a, a variety of patterns that you cannot believe in your wildest fantasy and here you see how the water is uh, is moving from the bottom to the top of this image water is moving over black uh, lava sand and the water itself it's uh, contaminated by by um, uh, glacier silt which is uh, uh, formed when when uh, the glacier is moving over the back bedrock and grinds it into a fine powder and that that powder gives the water a milky character so it, it looks like it's shot on a long shutter speed but it's a fast shutter speed of course to freeze uh, the motion to avoid motion blur when you fly from uh, either from an airplane or helicopter you need a fast shutter speed to avoid motion blur the second image I will talk about is uh, a shot from uh, 2018 over a completely different looking in, uh, river. Here the water is flowing, floating over um, volcanic soil containing uh, iron oxide giving the sand a, a very reddish, orange reddish uh, color. And uh, the water here also contains silt uh, giving, you can see the shallow parts Oh, actually, the deepest part of the river is where you see the the milky uh, milky look, and where where it's really shallow, you see um, it it looks more like uh, blue. But um, you can imagine um, observing this uh, from above and and playing around, putting your four corners on landscapes like this is you're absolutely in heaven. You literally you're, you are in heaven because you're flying, but in in a creative heaven, it's it's uh, fabulous. Uh, another one, which is uh, probably the one I'm mo most proud of, is from from another river uh, in the middle of the summer. It's, it's, it is extremely complex, and I've never seen a delta like this before, and the problem was that I had forgotten to take this air, air sickness pills and I got so sick so when I came across this uh, uh, fantastic river pattern I was uh, at the stage where I was almost throwing up so I took only one shot of this and the rest uh, of my energy was uh, spent on, on trying to survive and not throwing up in the helicopter but uh, I got this shot and I'm, I'm pretty happy with it and uh, um, it's not easy to get even though it's spectacular 
um, everything is spectacular from above but it's not really easy to make good photographs because you have to be very accurate with your corners and and to have uh, to get images with good balance yeah that's uh, a little bit of my my passion how it started uh, my passion for Iceland and my introduction to aerial photography which was uh, on uh, how to say white spot on my map before I had never practiced aerial photography and now it has become more more or less of my um, signature in photography okay thanks see you soon bye Beautifully abstract and graphical images there from Hans. I mean, wouldn't it have been fantastic to photograph Iceland in 1995? I think I only just left secondary school in that year. Um, but what's evident in Hans's art is his years of crafting images to the smallest of details. He's meticulous in his framing. And like I alluded to in my last video, it's not a regimental process that results in something that's technically proficient but soulless. It's precision with poetry and harmony. It's a connection with the landscape that draws on the nuance and naturally, naturally occurring art in nature. And I'm not just talking about his aerial photography because he has a fantastic portfolio of intimate images too, including woodland. I can only imagine what an amazing experience it must have been to be flying over Iceland, looking down on all those beautiful shapes, curves and colors. But I think the thing that resonates with me just as much as the images is the experience which Hans depicts. Now, I see lots of fantastic photographs taken with drones, but it's not something that I do myself because it's the experience of viewing the thing that I'm trying to make a photograph of that gets me really excited and the challenge of trying to communicate that experience through the photographs. But to be shooting from the heavens, as Hans puts it, creates a connection and understanding that really shines through in Hans's work and also creates the most wonderful memories. And it's the wonderful memories of experiences in nature that's one of the many things that we cherish as photographers. Thank you once again to Hans and the introduction to his work. Uh, like I said before, I definitely recommend taking a look at his Instagram profile and spending some time with his images there. Um, but if you enjoyed this, please leave a comment below and give me a thumbs up. But thank you very much for watching. And as always, I hope to see you for the next one.